A pleasant morning to all and welcome to the second day of the conference and the third plenary session. Today's plenary session will run from 8.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. Agenda reminder to the delegates before I introduce our speaker for today. Kindly post your comments or questions for our speaker in the chat box. We are honored to have with us this morning Mr. Manish Sharma. Mr. Manish Sharma is an innovator and entrepreneur who believes in power of AI and human thought leadership. As an out of the box thinker, Mr. Manish has always challenged the status quo during his two decades of corporate life and helped organizations, big and small, to rethink strategy, beliefs, processes, and technologies. I now welcome Mr. Manish Sharma to present his topic entitled How AI is Shaping Learning Experience. Hi, good morning everyone. My name is Manish Sharma and I'm very honored to be here today to talk to you about innovations in learning, specifically with respect to AI. Um, I'm very honored to be talking to so many educators in, in, for English language throughout Malaysia. And um, I speak here with a lot of humility um, because a lot of you are perhaps much more of an expert than I am in this space. However, from an AI perspective, I want to kind of introduce what kind of innovations are coming in in education and what can you expect in next year, next two, three years, how this is going to play out and what should you be aware about as you plan your um, future in learning and training and education as you go along. That being said, let me share my screen and share with you a small presentation. The topic is how artificial intelligence is reshaping learning experience. So learning was already changing before the pandemic. Uh, before the pandemic, if you remember, go back to 2019 or even before that, uh, you know, in the beginning of the world, we were learning using books and traditional tests and white papers and <clears throat> maybe in-person lectures. Those were a primary source. But for last approximately 10 years or so, the learning has started to move a little bit. What people started to do was, Apart from the traditional methods, they started to go to YouTube. They started to Google. They started to take complementary classes like Coursera or Udemy. I'm sure all of you have heard about that. So learning kind of started moving to um, um, from uh, traditional methods and approaches to kind of a combination of traditional and modern uh, learning methods. Typically, um, you know, the traditional methods were very good for long and intense topics. If there's a topic which is complicated, it takes time. Uh, perhaps the best thing is to get everyone in a room and talk about it. Um, but it also meant you have to dedicate some amount of time and effort to do that. It's not something that you can do just like that. You have to spend a week, maybe you are going to a college, you are, you know, you are, you are stopping what you're doing to do that learning. But then the modern learning started to become a very small bite information, small pieces. And they started to come what we like to call in the flow of the work, in the flow of the work. That means you're working and suddenly you find a problem and you find the solution. And it happens organically. That means learning is started to happen as in when you're finding issues, when you want to learn, some topics come, you don't know enough about it and now suddenly you have a learning. To go a little bit more detail in this concept of in the flow of the work, what happens is person is doing a traditional learning, maybe they go to a college, maybe they're attending a conference or you know just like this or anything like that. And what happens? Something that you don't understand, you're stuck. Then what happens? You suddenly go and say, I'm going to look up. I'm going to look up in Google. I'm going to look up YouTube. I'm going to look up anywhere. So this is the in the flow of the work. When you're working, you are learning, you are even doing a job. 
and suddenly you, you have a problem and you find a solution. Just imagine I'm writing a sentence, English sentence, and I'm not sure about certain aspect of it. What will I do? I'll perhaps look up and come back and, and correct myself. But pandemic has changed things, obviously. In the conference, throughout the conference, I'm sure people are talking about how pandemic has changed things. But clearly, it has impacted how we learn, where we learn a lot. This is a very busy slide. So without going into too much detail, it's fairly um, accurate to say that, you know, um, suppose you, you were in a building together with your colleagues and you didn't understand something or you're confused, you will look to your left or right and you're going to say, hey, how do I do this? Or what is the right answer to that? And people will answer that. Not anymore. Things are changing. That 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 is sometimes not an option when you are working from home. If people used to, you know, as a manager, you can get everyone into a conference room and talk to uh, them about certain things. That is not an option anymore. I mean, sure, you can do it in Zoom, but it's not the same thing. So a lot of things have changed, and a lot of learning methods have been impacted by by COVID, especially the learning that was happening in an informal way. Uh, which worked with the formal education and kind of, you know, collaborated with it, that has been damaged pretty significantly. And that is not good at all. At the same time, while I'm talking about how unstructured learning was good, structured learning has a lot of importance. Um, I, I, when I was preparing for this, I found that a bunch of companies throughout the world and organizations have mentioned how they have been increasing revenue, or improving profit margin or achieving other key successes when they actually have a structured learning. So structured learning is not a bad thing, but the supplementation of the structured learning has, has, is not going on as well after COVID as before. On top of it, structured traditional learning also has some deficits. It has some issues. Let's go over those issues. What is not working in traditional learning systems or methods? So if you go to traditional education methods, teacher, in case of, you know, especially educators, let's talk about educators. Educator gives a series of lectures. They, you know, lecture one, lecture two, lecture three, you are covering a lot of topics, you know, this week, next week, etc. Students take tests and, you know, the test might be three weeks from now or four weeks from now. And between now and then, you're probably, you know, not doing anything about the topic. You don't have any access to anything by which you can do anything about the topic. I mean, the very best students among us will probably go back to the book and read it. But let's get real. How many more of us, 70, 80% of us are going to do that? Very less. So, so sometimes people get bored. Sometimes if they don't understand something through the process, they don't feel like they have a recourse. And, and they they don't have a way to, for example, in the night, 11 o'clock, I'm suddenly have a question. There's nobody to answer my question, right? So traditional constructs were a little bit off. The traditional learning management system, if I go talk very specifically about the learning management system, they were a little bit, um, uh, you know, in, in trouble as well. Their format was long form. If you think of traditional LMS system, they're long form, uh, you know, two hour training, three hour training, five hour training. That is what you typically believe. Students, even before starting e-learning, they already are fatigued. They're like, oh, I don't want to do this. The information that they're retaining is not enough. Multiple studies have showed, showed that the information retention is a big problem nowadays. And really, if you're going through e-learning and if you have a question, where is the help? Where is the support? How do you how do you kind of you know get the help? So that was another problem. So feedback loop was very weak. So in a very static environment where there's a fixed course, it is what it is, take it or leave it, that kind of scenario, the traditional maybe LMS can work. But we don't live in that world anymore. We live in a world which is dynamic, which is changing very quickly. And that's where I think the traditional LMS system is start to have some trouble. Apart from this, three broad changes also happened that they'll be worth keeping in mind for all of us. One, um, you know, 
lot of learning nowadays is happening in micro learning, right? I already alluded about that, how people are more comfortable with the smaller bit size, bite size learning. And that is indeed true. That's actually, there are multiple trends in the statistics which are telling us that now micro learning due to attention deficit, you call it whatever, is getting more attention than the traditional system. That means you want learning to be in bite-sized pieces. You want content in minutes, not hours. You want contents which is in multimedia, visual. And something that is, you know, you have all heard about TikTok and, and, and Twitter, right? Why is TikTok and Twitter so famous? It's a good question to ask. Because that's the amount of attention span we have. And everything should be conversational. So more and more learning is people are more comfortable when they can talk just like you and me are talking instead of uh, something, you know, uh, like, you know, a lot of, um, you know, traditional systems. A conversational learning system is a good learning system. So that is the first change that is happening. Second, you know, and within this first change, if we go a little bit deep, we have found multiple statistics which tell us micro learning, how it is, uh, you know, um, very, very successful, especially in context of education. I put together some information uh, that you can refer to, but uh, micro learning as addition to the traditional learning is working very well, even in education. Second change, since I talked about three change, I'm going to talk about the second change. Second change is around um, collaborative tools. So employees and educators, everyone nowadays is using collaborative tools much more after pandemic than before. That means if you are using Teams or Slack or Zoom, that's something that everyone has started to do. We are very comfortable with that. That's the channel where we spend a lot of time. And you will say, why does it matter to me when I'm in learning and, and, and uh, education? Why are you telling me about this? Because that is a new channel through which you are going to actually disseminate information. It, education and, and learning is very much like, in some ways, very much like real estate. Location matters. You are going to train people, hopefully, in the channel where they already exist, rather than trying to bring them to a channel where they don't want to go. That is more difficult, there's resistance to that. So there is a second trend that we need to kind of acknowledge. And the third trend is more of us have started to become comfortable with conversational interface. That means, you know, in my home, I use Google Home. Some people use Alexa. So this means that more and more people are getting comfortable with conversational interface. You are used to switching on light or listening to music or just making a phone call or making a list using conversational interface. Now, if you're used, used to conversational interface at home, that means you also will be comfortable with conversational interface at office or work. So that is third change that is worth looking at. Therefore, I, I told you about the background, the history, how things are moving, what are the new trends. So let's come to the bottom line. How is artificial intelligence coming in learning? Let's talk about that. And I'm going to give you um, uh, some perspective from my company and our product and, and some which is outside our product. So for example, teachers and, and uh, traditional LMS systems, right? Can be used with new kind of systems such as ours to support the students. That means this, we are not talking about just do micro learning and forget about the traditional channel. Like I said earlier, there is a way and a place for both of them. So imagine if you are learning from teacher, but then you have access to a system which will help you with reinforcement learning, which will help you reinforce the concepts where you can go and ask questions anytime where there's a help and feedback loop where you're kind of interacting with the trainer, where, where you can revise certain learning very quickly. That is a game changer. And that the students will like because now it's not one or the other, but one supported by the other. This is how it works. And I'm going to give you an example of Morsel AI, which is our product, a product of a Resolve.ai company. Um, resolve as an R-E-Z-O-L-V-E dot A-I, as you can see on the screen. 
So the way it works is if you're a student and let's say there's a training assigned to you, you will get to know about it via email or on Teams, you'll be intimated about it. And you will say, okay, let me see what's going on. And you'll go there and you'll say, listen, Manish, there's a three minute training assigned to you by your instructor. Do you want to do it now or later? Let's say if I say, yeah, why not? I'll do it right now. So then I go through the learning by clicking on it, click, 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 or by conversationally, it will take me through a route. Now, the so far, so good. So far, it sounds like a traditional system, only the difference being it is in teams. But there, that is where the things get a little bit interesting. Suppose I don't understand something in the middle of the training. What do I do? I'm just going to go ahead and ask a question conversationally. And the moment I ask the question, it actually goes back against the knowledge base and provides me the answer based on the context of where I am, in which training I am, it'll give me the answer. And if I'm happy with the answer, it's great. If it does not have an answer, or I'm not happy with the answer, it will say, oh, I'm sorry, Manish, looks like I could not help you. Let me take this problem to the trainer. And if the trainer is online, it will connect to the trainer in real time. And if the trainer is not online, then it will send a message to the trainer offline. And trainer or teacher will, at the end of the day, they can look at it and say, huh, looks like a lot of students are having problem in the section two of my training. And they're asking same question. All of them asking same question. Maybe, maybe I can change the training or I can change, train the bot so that the bot can answer that question that people are asking. So there are different tools that as a trainer I have now to kind of help the, help the students. In the process, what I'm doing is I'm improving my training because I'm getting a lot of feedback from people on, and I'm helping them by the way, I'm also helping them get the answers. And each new batch of learning is going to get better training because there's learning that have gone into it and also better bot. The bot will be able to answer a lot many more questions from to the second batch and third batch than the first batch because because new bot is getting smarter all the time. It is learning what it can answer, where the feedback is good, where the feedback is worse, and therefore it is learning. By the way, on top of it, creating training is very, very easy. So you don't have to go look outside and call an expert. You can create your own training. It's very simple. It's a studio. You click, click, click. You can create your own training. You can add a video. You can add an image. You can add a, anything you want. So that, <coughs> excuse me. That makes it very, very easy for, for teachers to connect and create training, for a student to get, if they're confused, to ask questions, for teachers to improve training, for bot to get a smarter. All those things happen simultaneously in the system. Apart from this, how can AI help? Well, in, in, in our product, in future, we are going to bring AI-based training suggestions. That means, suppose you are asking a question again and again about proverbs, I don't know. Then maybe the system will say, listen, I have a small module on this. Do you want to do that? So I can suggest what to do next. So AI will be intelligent enough to make the recommendations to you what to do next. Similarly, gamification. If you achieve certain uh, milestone, if you answer certain surveys, if you, if you, uh, if you are the fastest among others to reach certain milestone, you might have some, um, you know, additional marks or additional points that can be converted into Amazon gift card. I don't know, things of that nature. That makes it very interesting. You can have competition between the students, all managed by AI. And finally, you know, you can see aggregation of patterns and data. So essentially you can see, hmm, when we change this training by this to this, suddenly there's different kind of feedback emerging or the feedback is too negative or the feedback is great, right? So based on the overall patterns, you'll be able to see the patterns of what is happening much better. And therefore you will be able to, AI will help you understand that. Therefore you will be able to take better decisions about your training. And therefore you will be able to drive better outcomes for, for, for the people who are getting trained. So therefore, just trying to summarize, uh, next two slides are summary slides. One, there's a lot of handholding that can be done by AI. 
uh, AI is not a replacement for, for uh, you know, core teaching, but it is supplemental. It can help. Uh, it can help you on the time, the night when someone wants to ask a question, AI can help and support them. Um, it is on teams, especially our product is on teams, which we believe is very important. The, the channel should be the channel where people already are. Um, training should be small, bite size. It should use some kind of conversational platform. And the power of content creation should be democratized. That means anyone should be able to create uh, you know, new content. Not, not, it should not be so difficult that you have to have five steps in creating the content. If I want to change the content, I should be able to do that. The long-term benefits is are, um, number one, the content will keep getting better, right? Because the trainee and trainers, there's a connection that we have built. So the content will keep getting better. Second, the availability of ongoing 24 by seven. Uh, so, you know, you have availability of a chatbot trainer all the time. Also, you will feel like the trainers will feel like as if there's clones of them, which is helping them when they're sleeping, right? Like you don't have to be on online all the time for your students to learn. You can help your students learn in your way, the way you want to teach um, by creating almost like a clone of yourself. Uh, who can do at least part of the job. And finally, reinforcement of concept, right? The way we imagine this is you're going to go to your lectures and classes and come back and they will be, the moment you come back, there's a small micro learning assigned to you. And you say, huh, there's a micro learning assigned to me today, right now. You go through the class, you, uh, you know, you get the reinforcement learning, you ask if there are any questions in conclusion. The teacher gets to know if there are questions in conclusion improves the lecture, improves the bot, improves the micro learning, and the feedback loop is very strong. So therefore, the student's outcome will be much, much better as compared to the traditional uh, systems. So these are the innovations which are coming in, 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 the, you know, in the space of uh, AI, because of AI in the space of learning. And some of these are coming very fast and, and um, um, I, I hope that more and more educators will kind of familiarize themselves with this product. You, you guys already have this product and familiarize yourself with this. Um, not only our product in general, AI changes that are coming in and, and kind of remain in tune with what is happening outside uh, so that you can bring innovation to your students. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the time and the opportunity. Hopefully this was interesting. I'm open to taking any questions. Thank you.
thank you for such an enlightening session. As highlighted by Mr. Manish Sharma, I believe we have come to realize how AI now plays an important role in shaping our students' learning. We have come to the end of the plenary session. We hope that you have benefited from the presentation. Next lineup in the program are the presentation of ELTC's improved platform and followed by the parallel sessions. We hope you would participate actively in these sessions.